Today we are doing an unboxing review of the special edition Leatherman Charge Plus with G10 scales. This one's red and I picked it up from REI and I'm pretty excited about this review. I've been wanting to get one of these for a while now and uh, now we have one. Welcome back to the Gears and Tool channel where we do do-it-yourself projects and product reviews just like this one. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button below and don't forget to click the bell icon so you're the first to be notified when I release new videos. So today we got the Leatherman Charge Plus G10 version. So I'm pretty excited for this review you guys. My very first video on YouTube back in 2013 was of the original Leatherman Charge. And um, if you go back and look at it, it's probably not the best video by today's standards, but this is kind of how I got started doing this. And um, I was really excited when I saw that they came out with the G10 version because I have a couple knives I really like that have G10 scales on them. And then my uh, favorite pistol that I have also has G10 scales on it. So G10, just a material I personally like a lot. And I thought it was pretty cool that um, they have a special edition G10 version. So I just, I had to pick this thing up. Again, it's only available from REI or Cabela slash Bass Pro Shops. And um, I ordered this one from REI. I'll give you guys a link in the description below. And um, as we go through this review, we're gonna have five categories. We're gonna take a look at the uh, overall size and weight of this multi-tool. We're gonna look at the outside features and what's kind of special or different about this particular charge. We're gonna take a look at the pliers. We'll do the inside tools. And then we'll kind of finally take a look at the price point of this thing and who the kind of intended audience is for a multi-tool such as this. So I don't know about you guys, but these uh, kind of blister style packaging, I'm not exactly the most elegant opening. so. Let's just have some fun with it and dive right in. Let's see, you kind of tear off this side. Completely destroy the packaging it came in. Heaven forbid we ever want to reuse it for something. All right, so that's uh, trash. And there it is. And man, that's, that's an even cooler in uh, person than I envisioned. So my camera had a glitch in there somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it cut out. So we're gonna go ahead and just show you what all came in the now destroyed box and um, review the product. So first up is the nylon sheath. It's uh, a nice nylon sheath, has a snap button style clasp on it. On the side, there's uh, room for um, the like extended bit drivers or maybe a small flashlight if you want. Um, you know, it gives you some flexibility. And um, of course, there's the belt loop on the back. So just a generic nylon sheath. Um, Leatherman ships these with some of their other products as well. Um, no complaints there. So nylon sheath. And then uh, something that's kind of cool is you get kind of a little goodies bag uh, with this particular Leatherman charge. You have a uh, bit driver sleeve with, uh, let's see here, six different bit drivers in there. There's a little space for some extras if you already have a uh, bit driver kit. Um, that will fit in the back of the sheath, I believe. Yep, so there's a pocket right here in the back of the sheath for the bit drivers. Just slip that in there now so it's available when I need it. Just like that. Also in this bag here, I'm glad to see a pocket clip because that's an extra 10 or $15 I don't have to spend later. So i um, really glad I let them include that. I, I really wish, let me get this out real quick. And that thing really grabs the bag pretty good. So I really wish that Leatherman would include a pocket clip like this with the Leatherman Wave, the Leatherman Surge, their other multi-tools. It doesn't cost them that much money to throw in. And uh, it really, I think, gives you a lot more options for how you want to carry this multi-tool. So awesome. And then uh, let's see here. Oh, we have a lanyard loop as well. Again, even unlike the Leatherman Wave where you spend $100, they don't include these things. It'd be really nice if they did. So yeah, so we have the uh, detachable lanyard loop the pocket clip, the sheath, and the tool itself. So let's go ahead and move these other things to the side for the moment. So the size and weight of this medium duty multi-tool is four inches long, 0.77 inches thick with uh, out the pocket clip, and 1.45 inches wide, which is on par with the Leatherman Wave Plus, which I previously reviewed. So very comparable in size. The weight of the Charge Plus with G10 scales is 7.8 ounces. Now, if we include the bit kit, that bumps us up to 8.75 ounces. 
And of course, if you have the bit kit, you're probably gonna need a sheep. So if we add that, we are at 10.1 uh, ounces total. And um, you might be kind of wondering how that compares to the Letterman Wave because you know the charge is basically the upgraded version of the the Wave, right? So the Letterman Wave is coming in at 8.3 ounces versus the 7.8 ounces. So about half an ounce heavier for a tool with all the same basic functions, except of course the charge has better materials, which we'll get into in a little bit. So the Charge Plus here is half an ounce lighter in the Wave. Let's take a look at the exterior tools. First up, we have probably one of the biggest reasons you might be considering this tool is the S30V plain edge 2.9 inch long knife blade. And an S30V knife blade is probably gonna last around three to four times as long as a 420 HC steel blade. Um, I might do a comparison test, like a cutting test in the future. So if you guys are interested in something like that, let me know in the comments below what knives you'd want me to do. But again, a very high quality steel on this plain edge knife blade, which is the primary blade, of course. And just a quick note about S30V. It's a very popular steel. A lot of people like to claim they have it on their knives. And not all S30V steels are gonna be created equal. Um, different factors such as uh, how it was cut from the rolled material, what direction the grain is, um, the heat treat, and just some of those other factors are also important outside of just the blade steel itself. And with a company like Leatherman, you can be pretty rest assured that they did their homework and did it right. And um, you know, just looking at the blade and touching it and feeling it, I mean, it feels razor sharp. No concerns here at all. Very impressed with this blade. Additionally, it just feels a little bit smoother in some of the areas like the thumb nook here and uh, stuff like that. Just a little bit more polished overall um, feeling than the like Letterman Wave, which is a little bit more of a, a practical utility tool. So the other blade that you get on the Charge is this fully serrated edge 420HC 2.9 inch long blade. And this is one of the areas I'm a little bit disappointed with this particular multi-tool because you have this S30V on the other side. It would have been really nice if they had made this an S30V blade as well. I understand that would have increase the cost a little bit, but this is kind of a no compromises tool. Um, it's at the highest end of their price range for this form factor. And I would have preferred to spend just a little bit extra money to have S30V on both knife, knife blades. Um, another difference between this and the Wave is you have the fish hook here, which some people really like and some people don't care for as much. I'm kind of neutral. Uh, I don't feel that it really gets in the way. Um, it's nicely kind of chamfered or uh, recessed cut on both sides. So I don't ever feel like I'm gonna catch my finger or anything like that that on it, but um, I don't personally feel uh, fish hooks are a particularly effective cutting method. Um, so I don't use them that much. So a blade like this Leatherman Wave here without the fish hook serves me pretty well. But some people like this, um, if you're a fisherman or something like that, comment in the comments below. Let me know if you use this function very often or you think it just weakens the tip and risks um, breaking that tip off. Um, you know, increases the risk of breaking that tip off. Be kind of curious to hear from you guys who've had the charge longer than me. So that's the other blade. Um, I do like it, and again, it just feels a little bit more refined than the uh, blade on the Wave. Just uh, edges and stuff don't seem to be as sharp, and uh, things just seem to operate a little bit more smoothly. So let's take a look at the other two exterior tools. Uh, we have the serrated, or I shouldn't say serrated, the uh, saw, which is basically exactly the same as what you find on the Wave, which is fine by me, because the saw on the Wave works great. So um, not, not really much to say there. And then the final tool on the exterior is the file. And the file on the Wave is my personal favorite of any multi-tool, mainly because they have the diamond coated side, which is great for touching up knife blades or other um, metal work where you just need to take a real sharp edge off a of hard metal. So uh, I love that they have a diamond file on the full length of this side. The other side is just a simple cross cut, which works fine for woods. And then on the bottom, they do have uh, you know, hatch cut so you can do groove cutting on metal and stuff like that. Maybe you have a, a um, screw, for example, that the uh, head is stripped out on. You can just quickly cross cut it and put a flathead screwdriver in there. So I actually use the file quite a bit and I especially like that it has the diamond coating. So that's the tour of the outside tools. Let's take a look at the interior tools and arguably, arguably what Leatherman does best and that's the pliers. And right off the bat, we can see that it has the 154CM hardened wire cutters that are replaceable, which is awesome, especially on a tool at this price point. I like the ability to replace the wire cutters if needed instead of replacing the entire tool. On the inside here, 
we have the hard wire cutting section, then we have the normal wire cutting section, then we have the kind of the general plier area for gripping uh, bolt heads, things like that. And then up here is something I wanted to kind of point out. I'll put a picture up here. The um, Leatherman Charge TTI has a um, crimper right here on the plier head. This does not, it just has a flat section similar to the pliers on the Wave. There's no crimping section here. And I'm actually okay with that. I prefer that. It gives you more area to work with when you're bending things like sheet metal and stuff like that. And um, I don't personally crimp much wire and um, I just crimp it back here where you kind of have the pinch between the handles. So I don't have a need to have an additional crimper up here, especially when it inhibits the function of the uh, pliers and other applications. Uh, the handles are pretty rigid. There is more flex than I would say the Leatherman Wave has, um, but not by much. And honestly, I don't feel, I don't ever feel like I'm compromised when using this. It, there is a little flex, but it's very solid and it's very comfortable. Um, just like the way the, the edges here are rounded off, unlike the uh, Super Tool 300 or the Leatherman Rebar. Um, it's a nice, comfortable handle um, and it's rounded off. The um, pocket clip doesn't really feel like it's in the way. I mean, an excellent set of pliers. And again, like I said earlier, Leatherman has always been known for their pliers and the Leatherman Wave and Charge Series probably has the best set of pliers in its class. A plus on the pliers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interior tools. On the left-hand handle, we have the can opener slash bottle opener and the wire stripper down here, which um, I actually use pretty frequently. I like that the wire stripper is just uh, nice and handy right there. And then we have the uh, bit exchanger which uh, I think is a good time to talk about the bit kit that comes with the Leatherman Charge Plus. Um, this bit kit only has six bits in it. Um, they are double-sided, and I'm a little disappointed that they put it in a sheath that, uh, if you can see that, is half empty. I mean, they provide a sheath that can hold, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, 10 bits, but they only put six bits in it. So I don't know, a little bit of a slap in the face when you spend this much money on a multi-tool. But um, the bits that do come with it seem pretty nice. They're um, hex bits and Torx bits uh, for the most part. Um, I would have preferred to see maybe an extra flathead or Phillips bit in there just in case you lose this one because, you know, let's be honest, it happens. But um, yeah, you get six bits with it. It doesn't weigh that much as you saw from the scale test earlier. Um, the only downside with this type of setup is you can lose the bits. Um, that's an advantage uh, maybe the Super Tool 300 will have. But uh, the benefit here is if you have a very special bit that you use frequently, like maybe you work on computers a lot and you need to Torx bits frequently, you can adapt this multi-tool for your uses. On the right-hand side of this multi-tool, we have the flathead screwdriver, which works great as a pry bar for everything, especially paint cans. The eyeglass uh, screwdriver, which I don't find I use that frequently, but occasionally when I do need a pair of eyeglass screwdrivers, uh, it's super nice that we have one here. And it's double-sided, of course, you have the Phillips on one side and the flathead screwdriver on the other. And then we have the, the scissors, which frankly, I don't care for having scissors this small on a multi-tool. I don't find them to be really big enough to cut most things. And um, they just, it feels like kind of a waste of a, a tool slot. The good thing is it's on the interior handle. So you're not wasting a valuable exterior slot like you are on like the Leatherman Surge, for example. Granted, those scissors are a lot bigger on a Surge and a little bit more functional. So those are the interior tools. And that kind of brings us to our final category, which is price. And that's where we have to have a quick discussion. So the price for this multi-tool is $169.95, which is $70 more than the Leatherman Wave, which has all the same tools basically, except for technically the fish hook on the serrated edge blade. In my opinion, that's okay. I really like having the S30V um, knife steel on the blade and the GT, G10 handles just look sweet. I really like the G10 handles. And let's be honest, if you're buying a special edition multi-tool, you're buying it because you you think it's cool. You like it, it's, it's the cool factor, the uniqueness, the fact that none of your buddies are gonna have this tool is kind of the reason you're buying this. So I'm okay paying the premium to have something that's unique and a little bit more custom feeling than something like the Leatherman Wave, which is an awesome tool, by the way. I have a unboxing review on this. I highly recommend you check it out, but it's not custom. It doesn't feel unique. It's not a special edition. So $169.95, and essentially you get the G10 scales and the S30V steel and the just a little, you can definitely tell when you handle this, 
the whole thing just feels a little bit more refined, a little bit more uh, care was taken when this was assembled. You can definitely tell it's just a little bit smoother operating in general. Thanks for watching this video today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button below. It helps the channel out a lot. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you're the first to be notified when I release new videos. Next week, we're reviewing the SOG Power Access, um, kind of a competitor to the Letterman Wave at a little bit lower price point. We're gonna see how it stacks up. Cheers.